Welcome to Wit Fitness Wednesday, and everyone that uh, that has been chiming in, there's a bunch of y'all chatting. Thank you so much for uh, for hanging in there. We've had some technical difficulties, but we're going to get started now. Um, so, without further ado, Katie is on the other side of the ice. She's actually playing with lighting right now, as well as uh, the sound and the video and everything else. So, she is uh, extremely busy. Um, but tonight we are going to open up this box, make sure it's the right one for the mini dungeon. We're going to tie the um, Space Flybox version of Kelly Gallup's mini dungeon. And then we're going to tie Kelly Gallup's version of the mini dungeon. And uh, to Timothy Vetter, looking forward to the, to the Gallup masterpiece. Well, I don't know if I'd call it a masterpiece, but <clears throat> we're, we're going to give it a, give it a, five dollar effort anyway um and nan and chris all right now katie said hello catherine that's from C's first deer hair head i've done looking forward to some tips for shaping um well the deer hair head is the uh is definitely a tricky part but here's the the one katie can switch us over to the vice here's the one that we posted today um this is the uh the tan and cream um <clears throat> Uh, mini sex dungeon that we we tied or that we posted and here's a black one and the reason i was excited when this one came out with space fly boxes katie and i are going to not tomorrow but sunday to go out west and we were talking to some of these guys some of the guides ever on madison uh namely slide in guys they said black naturals white dungeons are uh <clears throat> are great to throw right now so um, that's why we're going to tie this pattern. And uh, thank you, Truman. Got it. We're on the old Instagram. Um, hey, Mike. Uh, awesome pattern. Can't wait to see what you whip that baby up. Okay. So, um, and Jeff will bring out whatever we tie. And just for uh, the fun of it, here is one that we bought last time we were at the slide in. Now, this is a uh, commercial version. This is not Kelly's personal version, but here is the, um, this one's a little bit fuller, but um, similar to the one that that uh, that we just, just showed, heads a lot tighter. And that's one thing when you watch Kelly, Kelly himself tie, he likes the heads to be a little bit looser. Now, Jeff Rowley, who's on here right now, he can probably, he can put the spots and put all the fancy designs in the head and make it look super, super nice. But um, <clears throat> even though this one looks super cool, I'm going to try to um, to go more Kelly's route and have the, the head a little bit spongier, a little bit softer. Um, so it's going to push the water, but not add too much buoyancy. So that's my, uh, that's my um, two cents on that. So these two in the vice, or these two are the ones we... So Smitty's fly box. Now I've I've got an idea of what I have in store, but I have not opened this box. And Katie's gonna come up with a fun little giveaway or something today um, that she will announce when she does pictures. So heads up. Um, see, it's not open. But whoever uh, wins Katie's little giveaway will get the box and everything that's in it, less what I'm gonna use tonight. So. Um, I like the way you had the head trouble. Thank you, Steve. Um, hunting small eggs in the Midwest this weekend. Let them eat dungeons. Absolutely, Andrew. I uh, know Tim Timothy. This is uh, typically um, typically this is fish with a sinking line, uh, and um, and it, it is it does not float. So let's see what we've got here. Let's switch over to the side camera here. All right, <clears throat> so we've got a Smitty's River Yacht Club sticker. Oh, sorry. There we go. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. We've got instructions here on how to tie it. I think Catherine said that she has uh, she's already tied this one per the box. So, and Timothy, I believe you're talking about um, or someone's talking about Smalley's. Well, there you go. It's a picture of a Smalley. Um, and it's got a neat little article in here, I guess. And then we've got our girdle bug, which is our beginner pattern, I'm guessing. And we'll flip it over here to the, the mini dungeon, which is what we're going to tie tonight. So 
we'll set that there. So what else do we have? We've got some marabou, some tan marabou. Set so right there. Got some dumbbell eyes. Oh, these are nice ones. Four millimeter yellow dumbbell dumbbell eyes. Cool. Ooh, spinning deer hair. And look what I've been using. Katie, someone switch me up here. Spinning deer hair from Nature Spirit. This is really good stuff because that's exactly what I was using uh, for the other one. Hair is really important. Um, I have a token gulf yellow patch. Cool. Um, hair is really important because that's what's going to make or break your uh, the head. <clears throat> We've got some straggle hackle here. Some thread, but I'm going to use the, uh, this is six uh, uni thread, uni thread. I'm going to use the um, GSP that I've got loaded, the separate fly uh, thread that I've got loaded. We've got a couple of size six and a size five hooks. Um, one's labeled back hook, one's labeled front hook, so that helps. Some legs, some pearl flashaboo, and some articulation wire. So everything we need. Did I hear deer hair and spinning? Yeah, Michael, this is going to be a fun, uh, a fun evening for sure, because this is not my cup of tea typically. So we'll get one of these hooks loaded in the vise. And we'll go with the one that says back hook. This is size five. Now, <clears throat> when I tie, here's if you're gonna go out and just buy any of this stuff. Uh, Kelly started off using, or I won't say start off using, but a lot of his tutorials have this um, the Daiichi 24 uh, 2460 and the size um, <clears throat> on the, the regular dungeons and mini dungeons, just different sizes. But the rear hook, um, he just released this, uh, or MFC just released the 7052. And I want you to look at it in the vise. The big difference between that one, uh, see how the eye is vertical? And that's what we'll tie on the second one. The vertical eye versus this one, the horizontal eye, you can... When we do our articulation wire, you can wrap the wire right on the very top of the hook shank, which is really nice <clears throat> using this MFC hook. Uh, I want to nail it as always. I know you will, Michael. I find that having the green pusher when spinning deer hair makes it pack faster. You stack the deer hair. If you don't love spinning, you can, yeah. Looks like it's spinning and stacking deer hair. <clears throat> I'm all right doing it. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not very good at, um, uh, getting a good clean whip finish when I'm done. So I'm going to use the, um, the six aught, sorry, the eight aught, uh, hundred denier nano silk and white. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. And I'm going to go try to go kind of quick. Um, just so I can, uh, get both the flies tied tonight. So we're going to start the thread, but feel free to ask whatever questions you might have. Start the thread, find some scissors laying around here somewhere. Here we go. Anyone's watching on Instagram, come over and check us out on YouTube. All right, set one. Start a smaller hook. Anchor marabou tail and flash. So let's see what we've got here for marabou. Now, one of the things we're looking through marabou, you there there's gonna be junk in here. It's gonna be like kind of junky um feathers. So if you find some that aren't quite as good, that's okay. Just throw them away and all will be fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to tie them kind of like Kelly does. So I've got my little tip here. Oh, let's get my thread back where it goes. So if you, don't, if you haven't done one of these, let's switch back over to the front or to the side, sorry. If you haven't um, done this yet, we showed about this a little while ago. I'm going to just rip off some of the bottom fluff here. So all this is is a, like a dish kitchen sponge. Just cut out, put, in, put into a cup here, fly puck, and it's wet. So I can do this, go like that. And so how do you tell good marabou from not quite as good marabou? So when I'm when I'm looking through it, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking at the tips. So you see how this one is, um, let's, let's hold it up to the, to the hook. 
hook shape the hook. So see how that's really um, full and fluffy at the at the end. Now compared to um, say this one, that's that's the tips are a lot finer and a lot more. Um, there's just not as much fluff on them. And then when you look at like here in particular, you've got this, you got the end there, <clears throat> and that's that's in your tip. So that one's not quite as good. Now you can always um, pull the the fibers off the side, and that's totally fine to do as well. But um, but typically it's the it, it's the the tip, and I I'm by by usually by the ounce now which is just you get a big, you get a small bag, but when you blow it up, it, um, it changes, <clears throat> it gets huge. So anyway, so use this little, um, use this little, uh, sponge to wet your, uh, your marabou. And we'll make it to where it's just a little over a hook shank. And we'll tie this in just like Kelly does. So we'll do a pinch wrap, make sure it's on top here. We'll do uh, three wraps to make sure it's nice and locked in. And now I'm going to bring it up to the front, holding on my side of the hook shank. Just like this, I should pull off more of that feather. Just like this. Now I want to leave a little bit of space right here behind the hook eye because I'm going to tie another marabou uh, feather in there. So we'll grab another little, there's a really good one. And I'm really trying to grab some that aren't quite as good initially. I really think that one time a while back, like a long time ago, we used some off of a boa. Yep, we sure did. So let's go back to the sponge love here since Andrew is talking about that. So whenever you do it, just put your, and I need to wet this some more. Let's get some. Oh boy, yep, that got some water down under there. That was nice. Um, there we go. So before I get that, I've got to get my flash. So I'm doing two pieces. So I'm gonna get one piece of flash. this off and I'm just going to do it simple. <clears throat> I'm going to double over to come top of the hook shank. Split it at the very end. There we go. So I can have a couple pieces coming out either side just like that. See, so I've got two pieces there. I'll cut it about that long. <clears throat> so now I'll bring a thread back to the marabou tail, back to the, the base of the tail. Measure this out again. See when the, the fiber's wet like that, it makes it much easier to measure. We'll stack that on top. Same three right on top. One, two, cross it over three. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, only we're going to work it on the opposite side. Just like this. I need to zoom in for the Instagram guys. There we go. Yeah, the color of the sponge was originally yellow, and now it's kind of like a... Got a stain in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can see we've got a little bit of a taper going on. And that's by putting the, the marabou on either side. I think the dye will come off when you lick your fingers to wet it. Look at the color of that sponge. Yeah. Yep. All right. Step two. You'll then take a hog wrap shell, wrap around the hook. I can leave the space to tie another marabou feather. The feather tips extend to the end of the tail. Okay. So we'll get our straggle string or straggle hackle find one end of it <clears throat> right here 
right there at the end. And to keep it simple, I'll put a couple half inches here. And I can use my rotary rotary vise to get this done. Now, this is one of the major differences between um, Kelly Gallops and this one is this hackle. So his is uh, has a dubbing body, actually ice dub of some sort, and um, <clears throat> there we go. And hackle and wire and a little bit more old school. So we get this right up to there. This is definitely a little bit easier way to do it. So we got that lashed in. Pull everything back, make sure my head's nice and clean. Wrap it back. So we got a good place to tie that, <clears throat> that Mary Boo in. Now, one thing I believe he does, I've got a little marker here. I'm going to go ahead and start doing this. So pinch this and go one, two, one, two, one, two. Just get a little bit barring there. It's hard for me to use my fingers to fold the heckle back when he's rotary. Yep, yeah, it's, um, I, well, on the natural stuff, I'm not too worried about it because it, it directs itself a little bit easier. With uh, this, this synthetic, I was able to twist it because it comes off one way. So if I just, and I did kind of mess up a little bit here and there, but if you'll just untwist it like this, see all, all the fibers come off one side of the, the, the core. So once you get it aligned, it, it goes really quick. But when it's on both sides or it's like this and you have to fold it back, it's definitely using the, um, <clears throat> um, using the, the rotary can be, can make it a little bit more difficult. For sure. So in the instructions, I'm going to do the same thing with the sponge. In the instructions, it says, leave the space to tie another marabou feather. The feather tip should extend to the end of the tail. And that's one thing that Kelly, when he's doing his, he wants his tips, because this is kind of building the taper, to go a third. Switch it back to the, the hook. Wants to take the, the tip to go a third to halfway uh, <clears throat> into the tail, not all the way back. So I want to I'm gonna do this part Kelly style and make it go about a third of this or so of the way back. And let's get that little spin. And a lot of times people twist the, the marabou feather like that will make it a little bit easier to cut off. Untwist a good idea. Thank you, Steve. Now we'll just cover this up. Doesn't have to be super fancy because I'm going to cover it up even again. Just make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And we'll do a little whipper. If you wanted to, you could pull a head spin on it and be done. But I'm going to go with my marker again, color up that white thread. And I'm going to put my barring in here. There we go. And just, just because I'm going to do it right. I'm going to thin out my Sally Hansons. Just getting a little bit on the thick side. I'm going to thin it out before we go to Salt Lake. I don't need that gum Sally Hansons. My knots don't ever come untied, right, honey? That's right. All right. 
So now we've got the um, we've got the the rear portion done. Easy, easy day. So I'm gonna take this and just hang it right there on my on my doodad. But wait, there's more. But wait, there is more. Okay, so we're gonna go front hook. If I can find the front hook. There we go. Yo yo on stream assassins. This one's right up your alley. On stream assassins is always tying the streamers. And you don't tie the, the little stuff like we usually do. So he's probably like, finally something I can get into. All right. So we got the supplied hook in the vise. And this is a size. This one's a size five. So the one that I posted today was size four. And um, you use alcohol to thin out the sallies, right? Yep. Just yeah. regular old rubbing alcohol. The higher percentage of alcohol, the better. But um, so we're going to get our thread started. Then we'll stick our eye on here. I need to put stuff back after I've used it. Boom. So this is a kind of a kind of neat trick. So we're gonna put our eyes on. Let's see. Hell, not like how's that for a trick? That's that was nice. Slide of hand. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spin it all around. Now let's straighten it up. Here we go. So we got our <clears throat> our eyes on the bottom of the hook. And uh, what's it, moonshine, amen. Moonshine, thinks out everything probably. When it's going to just drink it from it first. That's right. So I'm going to bring my, don't worry about tightening up your eyes yet. So they're just there. They're actually pretty tight right now, but um, don't worry about it. Make sure they're, they're somewhat straight. So I'm going to get my articulation wire. Now, when I'm tying my own, I'll never guess what I use. I'm using the Surflon Color Bright. This is the 19 strand, 17 pound, 8 kilogram. I just bought another spool of this, 5 meter spool on Amazon. It was $9 or something. But, um, but yeah, no, seriously, on the um, thinning out, Sally Hansen's just use regular old rubbing alcohol. So I want to go with one and a half times. So there's one half. Bring it over. Give me a little bit more. So I did just a touch more, as you can see. I'm not gonna try to put that. Oh shoot! I should have put that back in the bag. Hey honey, we start, we try to get that back in the bag here. So I don't, so we don't then go lost. Sure. Let's Thank see. you. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to get my, um, the fly I was just working on. Got it on there. Line up the tips of the wire like that. And we're going to kink it. So pull it as tight as you can. So now I got a little bit of a kink in that wire. So here, here's one thing that, your nail polish in a bowl of hot water a few minutes of the salmon camp is coming up so you're gonna need some of the some of that medicine um <clears throat> all right so here's one thing when you're watching people streamer videos that a lot of times is not properly or not not spelled out so if i tie this on the on the top of the hook shank like this do you see how the the loop is I'll make it a little bit longer but see how the loop is and see how the fly is going to ride It'll kind of ride, get it right. Okay, it's going to ride to the side. So, see that? So, you can twist the loop, you can do whatever, but but what Kelly will do is he'll pinch it like this. So, my, my wires going uh, parallel to each other. Put a few wraps, make sure that they're still going. 
and he's going to tie them on the side. So when I look straight down, you see how the, the wires are tied on the side of the hook shank? That's going to have that loop vertical. So that's going to have the fly ride correctly. Now I can shorten it up to where, thank you, honey. But now we've got the articulation wire back in the box for whoever wins it. Um, so now we've got the, uh, the hook eye about to right there. So it doesn't need to be very long. <clears throat> and now I can I'll cord up my thread a little bit. Now I can really get that part nice and tight. And I want to make sure that my wires are going side by side, that they're not twisted or anything. And as I'm wrapping this here, I'm going to start bringing the two wires up on top of the hook shank. See how they're kind of moved on top? Maybe one more. I'll cross over. A lot of people will um, just cut it off, maybe fold it over here, and that's fine. No, on the mini dungeons, Kelly and Smitty's, and a lot of people don't use a bead on the mini dungeons, Truman. On the bigger dungeons, they do. See, here's a bigger one. So we're going to grab this, stick her in, pull it down. So now we'll bring our thread all the way up to right behind the hook eye. Use our fingernail, push that hard, try to get a good kink in it. Now we're going to look and make sure that we can still see. Let's see if I can lift up. See how you can see through my hook eye. So my hook eye is nice and clear. I'm going to grab my thread, go under, and pull this up. I'm going to look under and make sure everything's good with that wire. Because what that wire is going to do, here in just a second, bring it back up. What the wire is going to do, is I'm going to go under everything and then pull really tight. Under everything, a couple wraps, pull really tight. Now that wire is what's holding my, my dumbbells on and keeping them really tight and locked in. You don't want to flip the, the, um, <clears throat> hook. the hook over if you don't want to. And if you want to, you can put a couple more, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Pull, pull, pull. And now that's pretty well locked in there. Now, remember how much I, I said one and a half and I gave myself a little extra? I can't get to it. This is this is what I've got extra that I'm cutting off. So It'd be okay if I was a little bit shorter, but once you get much shorter than this, it's really hard to uh, to grab onto. Cut that off, and you see where we cut it off. So now we're once again working on our taper as we're tying. Makes sense so far. If you want to put super glue on it here, you can. Really, no need to when you're when it's wrapped like that. So now let's see here. We'll be kind of fancy with it. I'm gonna grab another. Um, I'm going to grab a marabou feather and I'm going to look here at the bottom of the feather. So these are not shorter fibers, but just bottom of the fibers normally would just get stripped off and thrown away. I'm going to grab a nice chunk of these, pull these off so you can see the butt ends, pinch these together, and I'm going to wet them. I'm going to take here and kind of roll it around the hook shank. I want to go to that the halfway mark again. about right. We'll wrap up till I get to where my wire was and cut it off. Oh, that was a lot of stuff. Hello, Chris there Travato. What's up, Chris? So now we've got our connection cover here. And once it gets dried out, it'll be a little bit more floofy. It doesn't want to dry it, but it'll kind of show you where it is. 
So really all that's all all that piece is supposed to do is just make it look like one fly, not two separate flies. All right. Okay, so we are we got that part done. We got that part done. Pizza up the fly. Make sure you have a little space on the dumbbell back there. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our um stuff. But it's what is it? It's their straggle hackle. Straggle came hackle. With the uh, Smitty's fly box thing. Now, um, before, we'll switch over to the hook shank. Hey, Mama Angler. Hey, Chris. We've been doing well. Getting ready to head to Salt Lake City again. So, um, a lot of times you see me putting a whip finch, I'm going to use my uh, uh, bottom cradle. But since I've got these dumbbell eyes here, I don't need to. And I can also use my spring and my material clip to hold the, the hook shank, just like that. So let's twist it like I was telling. Um, <clears throat> Steve a little bit ago. So we get that going the right way, get the nice little tug. And we're just doing touching wraps for that body. And here in just a minute, we'll do it the uh, the official Kelly Gallup way. But this is definitely a fishy way. Nothing wrong with it at all. So we got that cut off. Got our body pretty well done. <clears throat> I'm promise I'm trying to go by the uh, the instructions. Uh, take a chunk of deer hair. Oh, I skipped over the the leg. So, hey, John Collins, and we haven't showed them yet, but we did get some pics of the ants from last week that we're going to share soon. So, um, I know that that John shared some pics, and we had some from Ken and Nan and maybe bill so we will get to those mm -hmm. all right so we're just tying one leg in thank you katie we're um, I get this done really quick and then we'll take our time on the next one so i'm gonna do an x here jeff rally says good legs oh. is he talking to me or you honey? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. you do have good legs honey oh thank you Okay, so all, all I've done is I've positioned that, made it right where it's right where I want it, and it just has an X wrap on it. I'm gonna do two wraps, pull tight, and those are good. Okay, so just to get these out of the way because it's kind of a habit that I'm well, no, not yet. I'm being silly, getting ahead of myself. I want to find probably the fullest feather of the bunch because this is the front of the fly. So I'm looking for a nice full one. I can't find them. Yeah, it looks that one looks pretty good. We'll wet it down again. Now let's get rid of a little more of it. All right, got that wetted. So same thing. Want that to go third to halfway into the the that wing back here. So about like that. Couple wraps, pull tight, three wraps. So we've got that right on top, twist it, cut her off. And just make sure everything is good and secure. Pull out our marker so we can bar that up manually. And I was going to use my Sharpie, but I figured it'd be fancy and use the fat tip here, but probably should use the Sharpie. All right, so now we're done with this marabou. So I'll set, set that over there because it'll go with the, the winner. And now we're ready to do some deer here. So before I do that, I'm going to get 
my other Kelly Gallup um, trick. And let's just get a straw. See this straw here. It was a regular straw. I can't think. Okay, here, here it was. Regular straw. Cut it. Cut it down the middle. Like a plastic straw? Yep, just a regular plastic straw. And we'll look at the hook here. So <clears throat> you'll have hackle here. You'll have all sorts of stuff. Just take the straw. Pull my leg back. Stick it right there. And that's going to keep the, your legs and everything out of the way when we're tying in the deer hair and when we're trimming the deer hair. So that is... Um, <clears throat> we're Gary, we're going to, the, to IFTD um, in Salt Lake City. Then we're fishing all over, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Um, <clears throat> Jeff Rowley's going to be there. Or you could use a paper straw if your state so requires. Paper, paper straw. Right. My, all my stuff cleaned up. So everything so far, hooks, everything except for the tools, Katie... We'll announce a little giveaway for these. I'll just go to announce that there's a giveaway for these. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. She's going to make something up on the fly. I'm really not a making up things on the fly kind of girl. <laughs> All right. So for the, the wing itself, let's switch over to the side here. So this is a, um, a brand new piece of, of deer hair. This is the Nature Spirit Spirit. Spinning deer hair. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised, but this is a top quality stuff that, um, that they, uh, that they sent. Before we get into that, can we just show the ant pics real quick? Sure. Cause sure. this, cause you, this is like a going to be a sec. Okay. Um, thank you everybody who sent in some pics of your ants this week. They were super awesome. Um, so I want to share those with you and we're going to start with John Collins. Those are balsa wood, by the way. I Super love them. Cool. It almost looks like candle wax. Mm -hmm. It's like a waxy look to it. Super cool. Um, and here's a little closer up one. Good picks too. Very good. Just very good. Very clear. Easy to see. I have no idea how he did that. You can hate those dots. It looks super cool. Um, yeah. Okay. And then Bill Billy Bugs, Billy Bugs, AKA Bill Brashears. This is the little, the cigar looking, um, foam piece, except this one is like a tannish kind of color, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of cool. Haven't seen so that yet. Bionic version of the bionic ant. Yes. The bionic ant. Or cigarette looking one, cigar looking one. And then he also did the one with a parachute um, on top. I like put a little bit of flash at the bottom for. Mm -hmm. the I like lightness. that. I like that a lot. Good picks. And then um, Ken B also sent his. He said that he was it was a work in progress for him, but he felt like he was okay, happy with him. But you know, and I was like, well, that's what you got to do. You got to try something out and then keep trying until you get it the way you like it. That's right. So perfect. It was really cool that everyone. I'd there. fish him. I fish them right away. I like this purple. Um, Nan also emailed demuthflyfishing at gmail.com along with Ken. Um, cool picture. It almost looks like a business card. It does look like a business card. It's like business cards by Nan. Size 18 <laughs> ants. Kapok. Simplify using Kapok. One of my favorite materials, which you can get at GB flies absolutely so thanks so much if you guys have a picture of a fly that you tied um something that you saw on the show that you tied with us um please share it with us on instagram tag us on the picture at doing fly fishing or go to your photo go to tag people and then put demuth underscore fly fishing or whoever you'd like to tag or you can just email it to us yes Demuth fly fishing at gmail.com. No underscore, just the nope. fly fishing at gmail.com. So that's it. Let's go back on over to our deer hair now. But I just want to be sure that I got those in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Katie, for putting that together. No problem. Um, and we'll go ahead and get back to See ya. cutting this. Katie's like, I'm out now. So I'm going to use my, my scissor tips, stick in here, kind of fold it up, grab a good, a pretty good chunk. Pulled out. 
grab it somewhat by the tips. And we'll flare it out like that. I want to try to get as much of that under fur, broken ends, shorts, all that stuff that's not going to be any good for, for tying in a wing. <clears throat> we'll grab my hair sacker and I'm going to use one of my bigger ones. This is not my giant one, but bigger than normal. I'll stack this up. See you, Ken. Thanks for the pictures. We appreciate it. And John, you as well. Those balsa wood pitcher, balsa wood flies, ants. We're looking forward to seeing those in New Jersey when you bring up a little kit for us to check out. All right. So, got that stacked. Pull this round. Sure, I could stack it a little bit better. But we've got our um, we've got our tips here. We switch back over to the fly. Doesn't have spinning deer hair. Um. Great. All right. See you later on stream, Assassin. See you, Bill. Um, so I'm going to measure this out to where Kelly says a third. Let's see what it says here. Here. Um, he measures a tipsy send to just above the hook point. Yep. We'll stack the deer here. Okay. So Kelly says a third of the body, but I think what uh, Space Flybox has right here is about right. So the um, he says measure the deer here so it goes to to roughly where the the hook point is so that's gonna be get rid of that um this went about right there so we'll chop this off i'm gonna hold this right here and let's put one quick little wrap here So I'm going to bring my thread up and down, start kind of pulling it in. I've got two wraps on it now. I'm going to take my finger, my thumb, and just push it down like that, and I'll pull tight. So this is just a giant um, elk hair caddis head. That's all it is. And Mike, you're asking, um, uh, that's funny, elk hair and pitch. You're asking what to if you don't have official spinning deer hair. Um, first of all, the primo deer strips are fine. Um, that, those are just a long, probably best bang for your buck are the primo deer strips. Uh, and if you remind me, I'll show you some of the ones that we've got here. Um, but those are those work out just fine. Um, what else? I mean, as long as it's long and hollow, but then if you super long. Um, the, the biggest thing, when you start getting the stimulator hair and like the fancier hair, it ends up being like you're kind of being wasteful. That's too darn long. I don't like that. So we're going to do the exact same thing. You get to watch that twice. One of us fails, redo it. One, two, one, two, pull tight. We'll push it down. Okay, going around the hook shank. Not around, only the bottom open right there. Grab it again. Pull it tight. Go through it. And I end up bringing the, um, bringing my uh, body too far back, but that's that's okay. We'll make it work. So because I brought my, my wing farther back than I wanted, I'm going to put, per the instructions, but I wasn't planning on doing this, put a little piece behind the eyes in the back. So all I'm going to do is take a small piece, cut the tips off, flip it over, go one, two, pull tight. And then we'll do the same thing on the on the top. And this is all stacking deer hair. It is. It's just right here. Let's get this brushed out, combed out. Thanks for coming it out over the trash can. Thank you. I just emptied the trash can to 
So hopefully you'd be happy about it. Oh, I was happy when you came in here and cleaned up your desk today. Ooh, thank you, honey. I came to I already, I already done been happy. So I'm going to take my deer hair here. I'm going to catch it. Catch it right behind the, the hook eye like that. Bring it forward. So now I've got our head of coming along. Bring everything back around. I really want to push all this back because I'm going to try to spin this front one as opposed to stacking it. So that, those first two are stacked. Remember, don't, don't overthink it. The, we did not spin anything. We just stacked it, and that's it. So hopefully this will spin, so I don't have to stack anything. I'm going to get a, um, another chunk out here. I'm just cleaning it out. Getting my, the fluff out. I want to cut the tips off. There we go. One of my oh Joe. Now here's where Joe can really poke fun to me. So I'm gonna pull that top hair. Well, that this hair here could be what what kind of stops it from spinning. So I'm gonna pull all this back. I'm gonna put one. Two, starting to kind of crease. I'm working around the hook a little bit. Three, so but this this one's just going down, and you can kind of work it around. Now I'm just going to bring that. See how it spun around? No big deal. I'm going to work my thread forward, and I'm going to find that hook eye. Now I've, I've got a, a really fancy tool for finding my hook eye. I think it's a pen. I don't really know what it is here. It is just like a little hollow thing. And I've got, someone's talking about the green things, blue thing. I've got all sorts of fancy tools for packing, but um, I uh, I don't know where they are. So I, I cannot lose this, um, whatever this is. I, I haven't tried to, but I can never find the official stuff. So I'm just clearing this up from behind the eye. And this is the part that's a bugger. I like to get about three wraps in. Here we go. So that's three wraps. We got the the hook eyes nice and clear. See how we uh, pull that back and see how you can see the hook eye there. Now we've got <clears throat> a few different options. Um, I'm just going to start off by trying to do just a regular old whip finish on it. So I grab it, cross it, use my finger to pull everything back and out of the way. See, I'm getting my little bit of hair in there. It's kind of one thing you want to try to avoid, but that's that's okay. If you get to the point, here's another little trick, little trick. If you get to the point where you're like, I can't get the, the hair out of the way, get a piece of hard plastic. In this case, this is my uh, glue Loctite head cement. I just cut a, cut this. I can't get it. See, I'll cut it right there. Cut the side and so you can see better. Um, see, this is what my glue came in. I cut it, and there's a little hole here. So I can take it, put, put the, the thread right there where the hole is, have it come out. I'll switch over back over to the um, the vise. So see how my, my eyes right there? So now you can really lock it in. Like that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of time things are not the best in the world. One, two, three, four. 
So that was two whip finishes. That is plenty on this. Okay. So two different ways to, to finish your fly. One piece of plastic, one just using your fingers. High tech. That's, yeah. I need all the help I can get sometimes. Okay, so my one of my legs fell out, so I'm going to make sure that one stays behind here. I'll do the same with the other one. All I'm doing is put in my, my material spring. So let's get a fresh, a fresh razor blade, because if not, I'll pick up an old one. So I've got a fresh little razor blade here. I'm going to take it. Now, when I first started doing these, um, I always made them too. I'd really been the, the razor blade. Now, I know a lot of y'all like the, the tools that hold the razor blade, and that's fine. But I would really bend it to make a, a really sharp angle. And I found that if I do it a little bit <clears throat> more of a relaxed angle, then it comes out better. So I'm going to come up. And I can always cut more off. So let's do a little bit more. And it helps to stick your tongue out when you're doing this, for sure. Now we're going to pull this part out here. Now we've got our eyes right there. So um, as much as you want to, look, take that off, as much as you want to try to get as close as you can, make sure you don't hit those eyes. Just going to look back. See, now I can see the eyes, so I can come a little bit closer. Now we can use our scissors a bit. So I'm going to take this is right there, cut. Because we don't want the hair to cover up our shiny body there. That would not be good. Make sure you don't cut your Um, <clears throat> anything except the deer hair. But you don't cut that. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to switch over to the side here. So now I'm going to look down on it, see how it kind of looks. Well, how you can see it better. Let's move this out of the way. So see how it kind of goes out to the side like that? That's what I want. So I take my scissors and I just cut. Cut. Let's say Jeff right now is like, oh my gosh, dude. There we go. And this is really where, as, as you all know, you can spend all the time in the world cutting and trimming and getting everything just perfect. So let's see what we're looking at right now. Let's get rid of some of these longer ones here. Just like that. Our discussion about double hooked streamers being dangerous for fish and anglers. If you were to cut one of these off, which would be in why I would cut the rear hook off because they usually hit the face of the, the, the fly, um, typically, but, um, the, you know, the double hook fly is, I guess it's more dangerous to, uh, to anglers than a single hook fly. But I mean, if you nail yourself, you, you will nail yourself. Um, it's better than trying to fly fish with two rods at the same time. Yeah, that's, that is true for sure. Just saying, um, Let's see. Good question, though. So yeah, the, typically when they they bite, they're when they hit, they're hitting. You know, you think about how fish is going to eat. They they eat they eat from the head first because a lot of fish have got like scale stuff that stab forwards or the other way. 
So they want to eat here so that they strike at the head. Um, and, and the, you know, you do get short strikes. So it's not saying that that's going to get, <clears throat> get all of them. But as a general rule, if I had to cut one off, I would cut the, uh, the rear hook off. But that's probably pretty good enough for fishing anyway. Um, good enough there. So how do we turn all turn out? Did I forget anything? Gary is having power issues at his house. He does not have power, so he couldn't get on. So my normal guy that's like, oh, forgot this, forgot that, is not on with us tonight. So for the, the legs, I want them to be a little bit shorter in the tail. So I'm just going to hold them up here. Let's see what they need to be. Right there. And like I said, there's some butt ends here there that need to be trimmed. But um, but all in all, pretty good. Got to hit the front hook. Rainbows will nip at the back hook. Good to go, Gary. Buddy recently had a pike jump out of the net and snag his thumb on the second. It was, oh gosh. Who better than a treble hook in the nose? Yeah, better than a treble, tre double treble hooks to your face. <laughs> First time to stun. Yep, that's true. I guess it wasn't barbless. Um, oh, and another reason why I would say, uh, probably the most important reason, if I had to cut one off, why I would cut the, the rear one off and not the front one is because I heard Ke Kelly Gallup answer that question and that's the answer Kelly Gallup said. So that's uh, that's my two cents on that. So let, let me just do one quick thing. Um, I know we're going we're running not quite over yet, but I'm going to do the rear section of this of um, another one just so you can see the difference because other than the body, you know, the, the head and stuff are very similar. Um, I'm going to put this... Um, MFC hook in the vise. So this is the MFC. If you're tying a bunch of these, these are, make it a lot easier. The 7052 this is size six. Um, so this is my rear hook. And I'm going to go like this. Start my thread. I'm going to grab some cream. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time grabbing the right one, I don't think. Maybe, maybe not. I'll show you this way to do it. So let's say you can't find a really good one. One thing you can do is, uh, let's switch over to the side, honey. So this has got a tip right here that is like tip. Doesn't look very good. See that? So if you can't, if you don't have really good marabou, you can't find the right one, just grab um, a little chunk here, pull it off, and that rear section is usually a lot, lot better. See how that looks good compared to that tip? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do that. I still want my length to be. Out the hook shank. Got one cross, cross. Pull on my side of the hook. So this is how you're gonna do the front and the rear section. Everything else is the same. I'm gonna bypass the flash. If you want to put flash in, you can. It's not super necessary. I'm gonna do this stuff right here. This stuff is awesome. Um, just looks great. Super fishy. Super purdy. Most of you don't really have to sort through the feathers as much. They just look look good. See how that how that looks. Or put it on the artificial tongue. I, I, I totally missed who commented before Jeff did about the artificial tongue. So I don't know. <clears throat> see that right there. So that that's the uh, this is the MFC tan <clears throat> mini barred tan brown. 
Um, this stuff, I mean, it's expensive, but you can use 99% of it versus, you know, let's say you're struggling to use half of the other stuff. So I'm going to grab it like that. See how it looks. Pinch it right on top. One, two, three. Now we're doing on the opposite side. Just like that. So we're still leaving a little bit, of, little bit of space here. I probably should lift a little bit more, but we've got the the cream on this side, that board on this side. Did not put any flash on it, but that's that's okay. I'm gonna grab a piece of wire. I'm gonna use the O2O stuff we always use. I'm using the six aught hundred denier uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. MFC Boo, yep. It is some good stuff. Yeah, other stuff. It's half, half waist, yep. Now, like I said, you can always um, you can always use the middle or the sides of the, the yeah the sides of the mirror, but you don't just have to use a tip. But um, so I'm gonna cross this over and leave just a little bit of that tag. See that little bit of tag? I just want to put a couple wraps in. Grab that tag and pull it back. Kelly is big on using your materials to create um, a natural taper. So that's kind of what that tag's doing. Bringing this down. And this is basically just going to be a woolly bugger. So we got our marabou tail, no flash, or two pieces of marabou and the wire. So I'm gonna pull this, make a little dubbing loop. So here's, for all of you all that know everything, here's your trick for the night. Um, nice time that John type in, but oh, four, three, yuck. So you know how you see people when they do their, um, uh, switch over to the side, I think, please, ma'am. Um, can you see it? No, let's stay on the hook, I'm sorry. So when they're doing their um, dubbing loop, they'll go like this and they'll spin it over, right, to close the loop, right? Everyone nod their head and say, yep, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you're doing a dubbing loop and you've got the thread at the front of the hook shank, we, we just made our dubbing loop, right? If I want to close this off, all I have to do is hold the loop up so I'm wrapping back and then bring it down. It's closed off. So you don't have to do that, um, that little doodad going around the thing, around the um, your thread. Just as Nan's here, we'll put our CNF dubbing spinner. Pull out some UV um, ice. This is this is uh, Kelly's method here. I might need to get some more. That'd be okay. So I've got a little little piece of the of the ice dub here. I'm gonna kind of pull it out and make it into a little bit of a taper. I'll dug on it. Stick it right in there. Maybe grab the dubbing spinner again. Catch it. So you can see it. You can see it down here. I'm gonna pull it to stretch it out because I don't. I want it to be thinner at the top, but it doesn't need to be really thick. This is a small fly, so it, it looks like um, it looks like it's um, pretty thin. It looks like it's got some bare spots in it, but I'm going to just give it a couple little spins here and see what it's looking like. So now I can see where my thin spots and, and thick spots are. So I'm going to adjust now and get it right. Okay. I'll spin up some more. If it doesn't move or anything, you can, you can unspin it. That's what I'm doing right now is just unspinning so I can thick up, thin up, get where it's just the way I want it, and I'll spin it back up tight. Now I'm going to put a one, two half hitches in. Now I'm going to just spin this up like this. 
Now this is where Steve was saying, doing the, uh, and we'll pull really tight here. Uh, that it's gonna be hard to use your, your um, rotary function on hackle. Don't worry about stroking anything back or getting it absolutely perfect. Not on here. Let's see, that's probably, yep. I probably need a little bit more space there, but hopefully I can get it. One, two, three. Pull tight. Pull everything back. Okay. So here's another little. So we got our. That's got a nice taper to it. Let's we'll see if I can pull this away if you'll see it. See how it's got a little bit of a taper in that body? That's exactly what we want. And supposed to plus with that vertical line, it's gonna make everything really easy. All right, so the, uh, well, that sounds like fun, man. So another thing that I've learned from Kelly, um, oh, I like, look at that, isn't that cool, Katie? How I was like stuck on that. So Wooly Bugger Hackle, mm -hmm. Hackle for Dungeons and stuff. We've all got our capes, right? We've got our nice little dry fly capes. And, and the reality is this stuff, we're going to use for flies the stuff down here. Most of it, we're not going to use like that. That's, that's a whole bunch of, but when you pull it out and look at it, like, Holy moly, this is like really good. Woolly bugger hackle. That's, that's nice. So we'll grab this. So grab a, a bottom feather. I like to leave the biggest ones over here on the sides for, um, for tails for, for mayflies for dries. Um, so like, yeah, Steve, I'm, I'm, I do not disagree at all. Um, but if, if you'll pull two feathers out from roughly the same spot, the front fly, the front hook, you'll tie in from here. Second hook will tie in from here. And that, that will give you your taper, so your front hackle will be longer than your back hackle. And we'll twist this up. So switch back over to the vise, please. Um, I'm taking my, see how that's just bare stem. I'm gonna go right, uh, right to little, or left to right, then bring it over and do another wrap, pull tight. And don't do that, what did I just hit? I don't know what that was. It is like impossible to break. No, oh, it's not impossible, I guess. <laughs> it's very difficult to break GSP, GSP or NanoSilk. But I did. All right, we'll try it again. It wouldn't be a whip finish Wednesday unless I broke something. So we'll do right to left, left to right. Pull tight. Now we'll do a half hitch because this is really... Steve, um, if you don't do this, I didn't like this at first, but practice this. I know, Chris, it's a hundred in there too. Like I don't, I, and it broke in the middle of the thread. I, don't, I, I have no idea. But hey, just pretend like I meant to do it and move on, right? But Steve, if you don't do your, um, just practice this. So um, <clears throat> I've got my, my feather tied in. I'm gonna get one good wrap. So that's really about half a wrap. We're gonna put, so that's one good wrap in the front. Angle it back. And I'm going to watch that hook point. Have where it stops right there. See, I've got our <coughs> our uh, hackle in. I'm to fix my some dude. I, I understand. I didn't like this until I did it a couple times. I'm like, holy crap, this is a lot easier. And here's our wire. I'll get good good couple wraps there in the front. Pull that tight. Helicopter it off. I'll pull everything back. Because what I'm looking for right now is to not really sweep the, the hackle back, but to give me a good spot to tie off that thing. So that is super simple by going down and up using the rotary function. And I, I'm, I'm right there with you on, well, I'm just used to doing it the other way. It took me a little bit of time to get used to that. And that's just, 
going through fast and easy. If you want to, you can get a Velcro and brush it out really good. <clears throat> that would be fine. So I'm going to get one more of these purdy um, doodads here. I'm going to pull out just a tip. See that? I'm going to pull that out. Oh, a little more. There we go. On the bottom, we're going to pull this, the, mayor, the MFC. Where is it on a field of fish event? Glass orbs rod. Wow. <clears throat> That's awesome. Good job, man. So remember, we're going for a third to half into that body. I'm going to cord this up because my thread was super flat. Just check it, make sure we're still on top. We're looking good. Hold that tight. Didn't really have to go in front, but twist it. It's looking a little yeah. bit woolly buggerish at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now my wet finish, and that's. If you can imagine hooking the, the front hook on the same way, doing the head and everything the same way, and um, but doing th this is the body itself. I'm trying to dry it out a little bit so you can see. So that, that top hack will be much more, uh, much purtier. Um, but just my press there. Oh, 4,000, Kelly, out of the slide in. I cannot justify the mass so far. I've tied two dozen flies on it. I'm sure that's going to be really good. George, I'll, I'll be tying on the uh, um, presentation 4000 at the show next week. I love that vice. It's really good. Nothing wrong with it at all. And we'll be tying on a presentation at the slide in a few weeks. So if you live close to slide in, send us a note. Um, week after uh, next. Week after next. Two, two weeks, yeah. Anyone up in Montana, let us know. We'd love to, to hang out. Um, Anyone on Instagram, sorry, I haven't been answering any questions. We're live over on YouTube chatting with everyone. So come over and check us out on YouTube. But um, we're probably going to log off or sign off here. Um, so this is the, the rear portion. You can see kind of the differences between the patterns. The um, Check out this hook from Montana Fly Company with that vertical eye. It's pretty cool. Um, the uh, We did use the MFC. Uh, mini barred marabou um <clears throat> we will pick a winner sometime somehow for this box once we get it all packed up with everything we used to tie if i can find it i don't even know where the fly is now here it is the first one we tied so you can see the difference in the bodies here's a rear hook versus that um so here's the, the first one we tied here so, guys, thank you so much. If you're under Bill Swain, Montana, he's an Orvis fly fishing guy who lent me the glass rod. He's up Montana somewhere. I thought you were on the do not fly list, Joe. Um, he may have, that's probably why he's going dry. Let's switch it back over to the main, main camera, please. <clears throat> so, we will, um, as you said, we're going to IFTD next week, which is in Salt Lake City. We will probably not be live next Wednesday night. The following Wednesday night, we will be live, hopefully, on location at the slide in. So we're going to be right there um, at Kelly Gallup's shop. We've asked them if we can do it. The problem is going to be uh, that seven o'clock their time, so they're closed. Um, but we're staying there, so you know if we have to show up a little bit early and do our do the show early, I guess y'all wouldn't mind too much if we were live at five o'clock as opposed to yeah five o'clock their time. So that'd be seven o'clock our time. But we'll uh, we'll come up with something and we'll put a notice out uh, when and where we're going to go live. But next Wednesday, we will not be live. Um, we really appreciate everyone, all you chatting and going back and forth on on the the on YouTube. It's been wonderful seeing you. Yeah, I'll thanks for hanging in Katie there. And let her take us out. We'll see you guys. Okay, that's yeah. Have a great weekend and rest of your week. And happy tying, everybody.
See Chris. See Joe. Yes, we 